What's up there, family? This is the General Cyrus Soon Sadi. I'm black at y'all again with this real talk today. We're going to be dealing with another powerful word, uh, sacred terms for black people de uh, decoded in ancient literature. This is actually part two, uh, naga, nigga, and, 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 and nigger, and nigger, okay, with the ER on the end. We're going to be dealing with a very controversial. A lot of people don't want to deal with it because they myopic and they have a limited view, and even when they are you know, once they're given the, uh, the uh, understanding from across the Kushite world to what it actually means, they've been talking so negative about it for so long, they feel almost embarrassed that they didn't know the previous information. You understand? So they still negative about it. You understand what I'm saying? And that show you that our people will never grow because they just won't uh, accept the truth when they see it. Sacred terms for black people decoded in ancient literature. Again, this is actually part two, Naga, Nigger, and, 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 and Nigger. And we're going to be dealing with all the ancient manuscripts, the documented, that's giving us the truth behind the meanings of these words. Are they divine or are they negative? I don't care what you, you know. A lot of people, the only definition you could give is the one your oppressor gave you. Even though you got 200, uh, 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 explanations and definitions of part, uh, uh, across the African world, the only one you accept is the one of, of your oppressor. And so that shows me you got a very serious disease, which we call niggeritis. Also a very serious disease that we call krakatosis. We're reading, but we're not understanding. We're reading, but we're not understanding. We're speaking, but the words are mute because we don't know the meanings of the words. So if you don't know the meanings of the word, you can read all the books you want. And you don't, you're not even close to understanding the book. And that's what most people is doing. Reading books for the sake of just reading the book, having no true understanding of what it actually mean. Uh, mean. But today we will be unlocking the mysteries of the ancient world, revealing black divinity. You understand? Once you have a, 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 the sacred vocabulary, you can, you can go across the, the world and pinpoint your people. Other than that, you just blow a smoke. Okay? So today, I want you to make sure you get over to KingSetty.com online marketplace. Official General Cyrus Soon Seti DVD lectures, t-shirts and hoodies, African and comedic jewelry, holistic tonics, remedies, and much, much more. KingSetty.com. And SETI University, get over to GeneralSETI.com, SETI University of Ancient and Modern African Wisdom and Knowledge, the complete General Sarah Soon SETI website, hundreds, almost 800 uh, videos and lectures, too raw for YouTube, BAM videos, SETI debates, Freemasonry, occult science, all world religions, black power, politics and economics, and so much more. I can't even go down. And so get on over there, GeneralSETI.com, SETI University and be amazed today and make sure you subscribe to all my YouTube uh, pages General SETI, Sarasun SETI and even King SETI with the master teachers on that page get over there because y'all know SETI live is lit subscribe to all the pages hit that notification bell and like the videos give it a thumbs up because you love it for, for those that's looking for those exclusive live streams by the General Sarah Soon Seti, exclusive live streams, you got to get over there to my Patreon, General Sarah Soon Seti, over 100 exclusive live streams on that site, guaranteed to blow your mind, get over there today and support. Now, family, when we talk about these words I'm going to be dealing with, Naga, Cam, Kim, Kush, Moor, Zulu, Mela, as in melanin. See, there are certain words that are, you know, give off a certain melody. You see what I'm saying? As you say, melanin, cosmic melody that, you know, produces a frequency of, of consciousness across this planet amongst our people. But if someone can convince you not to play a note, you will never complete the melody. And so we are trying to complete the melody. And what I'm doing is I'm giving you Possibly top seven words used for our people across the historical spectrum. And by speaking these terms, you can, you understand, bring up the majority of our greatness. You understand what I'm saying? Across Africa, Asia, um, the, uh, Europe, the Americas, and bring forth the clearest understanding of who 
our people are and is and the divinity of our people and the greatness of our mission. And once we understand that, just like you see, it will send a frequency across the universe. It will send a frequency across the, uh, the planet to reset our consciousness and thinking to black divinity so we can get on the path of redemption. We're not on the path of redemption because we're too scared to play the mel melody. So we're going to be dealing with niggas, Naja, even Naja, even though there is no damn J into the damn fifth, uh, 16th century. You understand what I'm saying? So that's actually Naga, but there is a, a form of the serpent that is used in Africa, West Africa and East Africa under the term Naja. Okay, see, they want to play with us. You understand? Naga, Nagas, Niga, N-E-G-A, as in synagogue, Negus, which is the queen, divine queen of Absinia. We're talking about Naga, Nag, N-A-G, Naga. You understand what I'm saying? And as I said, uh, Naja Haji and Naja uh, Negricolis. Ne okay, Negricolis. You see what I'm saying? The black spinning cobra of Africa, West Africa. It may be some in Europe too. And so when we look at Nagas, we say the glory of the kings. Kebra Nagas, glory of the kings. And so here again, when we look at, you know what I'm saying, the term Nagas. See, we have to understand that one thing, when we, it's not just a serpent. When you look at the Uraeus, which is a, a, a aspect of our set, you understand what I'm saying? When we look at the Uraeus, it is a king of cobra, but in the feminine aspect, it is a queen cobra. You see what I'm saying? And so we're going to see that there's, you know, more than one uh, uh, manifestation or definition when we speak these words. We got to go into the esoteric understanding also. You understand when you see the king cobra and you see the queen cobra that this is divinity, not just a snake. You understand, we we dealing with divinity when you talk about the fetter nagas, the law of kings. You see what I'm saying? So you see Naga or Naga is 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 in uh, def, uh in alignment with kingship. I'm also show divinity. You understand kingship, divinity, sovereignty. You see what I'm saying? Principality. You see? And so when you say Negus Nagas, hear me out, Negus Nagas. King of kings. But once you understand Niga, Negus is king, and you understand that Naga is uh, the king cobra, you, 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 when you actually say Niga, Negus Nagas, you're saying the king cobra. That's exactly what you're saying. You know, a lot of people don't understand, and we understand that the king cobra is a zoo type of the Pharaoh, zoo type of even the deity that takes the representation, and people don't even actually understand, because we, 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 you know, they see the the uh, Hindu expression of the Naga, and they don't even actually understand that the Naga as a manifestation of half human, half serpent, or even the deity man, uh, represented as a full serpent, preceded India by thousands of years. You see what I'm saying? So they actually think we're taking something from India and washing Africa with it when it actually appeared in Africa but, but before any historical India was on the, on the map as far as I'm concerned because India is one of our colonies but is no, in no uh, competition with how ancient Africa is. And so when you, even when you look at Senegal, you see, you see Niga is in Senegal. You see what I'm saying? We got many manifestations, and I'm going to break down a lot of people talking about Niger and, 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 and Nigeria and so on. Ain't no goddamn J into the 16th century. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, prior to the uh, 1524, the J was an I. Sounded just like an I and was pronounced just like an I. Only after uh, 1524 did it get the sound that it has to J. Today, so it wasn't no Jesus. It was more like Isis. Okay, it wasn't no Jesus because it wasn't no J. So I don't want y'all to when y'all see these, uh, 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 you know, you see nigga in the ancient world. You want to say is Niger? Ain't no J. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna straighten that out immediately. 
And so when you go into, we talking about divine queenship. You know, niggas is the divine queen of Abyssinia Kush. You see what I'm saying? Divine. And so this is where we, you know, a manifestation of our set. You understand what I'm saying? The holy mother that was also uh, represented as the queen cobra. Okay? The Eurasians, the Wajet. Okay, now, a lot of people want to talk to Medunada. They want to talk to Medunada until we say something that you just don't like. Now, this is the same uh, 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 expression, the same so-called language that, you know, you Negroes want to speak and, and swear to God you're speaking from ancient Egypt. And, then you know, the same uh, 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 expressions that gave you all the deities that you speak today, all the terms that you speak today come out of this same uh, in a hieroglyphic expression dictionary. This one happens to be Wallace uh, E.A. Wallace Budge. You see what I'm saying? What does he say about, you know what I'm saying, this word that today we say, nigga? I say, what? I goes in here and it says, nigger, nigger, okay? The goose goddess who laid the sun egg. You see what I'm saying? Now, this, this is very, very powerful that we are able, and I don't have no faith whatsoever in the so-called Medunetta. But this is the same, uh, 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 uh language, uh, combination, uh, you know, platform that all people that speak the metal net of the day use. So if this one ain't correct, then the mod ain't correct. The assets ain't the, the almond rods and the new ampoules and, and, and all that is incorrect. You say what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't throw one out when you don't feel right and then accept the other one when they all come from the same source. So if you can accept that, then you should be able to accept this. And so we see that nigger, you understand what I'm saying, is the goose goddess who laid the uh, golden egg. And we go in here and, and, and just like Senegal, you got Nigau, okay? You understand what I'm saying? The doorkeeper of the first, the four pylon. You understand what I'm saying? So you see that this expression, and you got to understand that there is no uh, 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 no uh, vows in, in the so-called. And so when you see uh, anything like, you know, ne Negu, and ne all, you get, all you see is the, the N and the G. That's all. So if you see Naga and you take the A, a out, you, all you're seeing is the, the, the N and the G. You see, you see what I'm saying? It's the same expression. It's got the same frequency. You see what I'm saying? Now, who determines the melody? You understand? Who, de who determines the frequency? Your oppressor don't want you to know because you're going to see divinity. So I just come out of uh, Nagas and I just come out of Negus. It speaks of divinity because the Negus is a divine king. He's ordained by God. The niggas is a divine queen. She's ordained by God to sit on the throne. So it's not just a kingship. It's a divine kingship. And so we see that this term, neg and variations of negu and naga and negger, all through the so-called medunata. And, and you quick to use kemet, you use tasetti, you use all these other terms. But when it comes to these terms, you don't want to recognize it. That's a perpetrating the fraud individual. You then spoke so ill because you was ignorant of the information. And then you want to determine that everything, you know, every time an African say it, you understand what I'm saying? They saying it from the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the source of the oppressor as if we are not connected to our ancestors and that we're, you know, we have, we're doing things that's African that we don't even know we doing. You understand what I'm saying? Until we go back and do the research and say, damn, they was doing this in Africa, but we doing it here in America, and we didn't even know it was from Africa, but yet we are doing it because it's in our DNA to do it. You understand what I'm saying? So we got to understand that coming from, uh, this is coming from the, uh, the great uh, matriarch scholar, revolutionary scholar, uh, Drusilla, Dun Drusilla Dungey Houston, the ancient Kushite Empire, the wonderful Ethiopians of the ancient Kushite Empire. I'm dealing with page two. What does it say? I'm starting from the uh, third sentence from the top. You understand? To the right, the rich merchants of the ancient Indian commerce had, had been Dravidians. One of their great kingdoms was uh, Pandaya, so noted in the Sanskrit writings. The Nandas 
in Bihar, of whom the great Chandra Gupta sprang, and his greater grandson, Askoa, Askia, were non Aryan. Those who, the, these were of the supposed to be degraded Sudra, Sudra, Sudan. You see what I'm saying? Sufi. You see, the Tashaka, it says Tashak, but Tashaka and Naga nations who figure so largely in Sanskrit traditions are words purely African. And so Tashaka is the king of the Nagas. And we're talking about half serpent, but then you have certain uh, uh, peoples like the Khmer, the Mon Khmer, who came over from Africa on the monsoons. And we can go through their civilization and show so much with the black woolly-headed Buddha, Christ. You understand what I'm saying? The Tashaka and Naga nations who figure so largely in Sanskrit traditions are words purely African. Wow. Got the great mother backing us up. And niggas still, you know why? Because you didn't talk. So, you know, and so what? It, 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 when she say it, is she speaking from the oppressors? Uh, 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 you know, definition of she's speaking from a, a revolutionary African uh, position. We got to ask that question. And so even not just, you know, Naga, we got Naga Sudan and you got Naga Nag Hammadi. You understand what I'm saying? In Africa. And so when we go to uh, Naga, Naga is the royal city of ancient Sudan. It just wasn't any city. It was the royal city. You know, sacred to a Apatimac the lion-headed deity that was taken to India by the Kushak, which we're going to deal with. You see right there, Naga, and you got Wide Ben Naga. You see what I'm saying? And so we see this is the royal city of the, the Nubians, one of the royal cities. And so as you got Naga Sudan, you also got Nag Hammadi, where they find... Now, how is it? Everything that I'm saying, every from Nag... Naga Sudan, a royal city, a divine city of worship, of a Padamak. Then you go to Nag Hammadi, where they finding uh, 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 the some Gnostic text that's revealing some information, clearing, you know, bringing some clarity to a lot of the misinterpretations of the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? Showing that there was other books outside of the ones in the book. You understand what I'm saying? With a, a different story showing you that this shit was made up as they went and that there was scrolls all over saying this, saying that, and they just chose what they wanted to cho uh, choose. You understand? To send the minds of the world down a, 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 a small lane of understanding to, to where they could be controlled. And so we see here even Nag Hammadi, which is very similar to uh, uh, Nag Champa. Because when you uh, go to the ham, you see Cham, C-H-A-M, is also the same as Ham, which means black. So you got Nag Ham Madi, and you got Nag Champa, okay, which is, is coming out of this, the same terminology, black. Also symbolizing, when you say Nag and symbolizing the, the cobra, symbolizing the Serpent, you're dealing with immortality. You're dealing with an infinite conscience, which is synonym, synonymous with deity, which you cannot understand because you're too caught up in your oppressor's understanding, which is so small. And that's why you niggas can read, but you do not understand. You can speak, but your words are mute because you don't have the true understanding. So you're dealing with ISIS, you know, Egyptian Isis thrown in Hathor. The Roman Isis carries the uh, Hathor milk jug and cistrum and wears a cobra uraeus. The cobra uraeus is a Greek word possibly derived from Egyptian, she who rears up. In legend, Isis is the creatress of the first uraeus. The uraeus cobra species, Naja, Naji, which ain't no Naja, ain't no Jays. We got to come up off of that. See, it's Naga. You understand? Nagi. You see when them Hagi. Nag, Nag, Naga, Nag, Hagi was a symbol of Lower Egypt and was often paired with the uh, Upper Egyptian vulture. So you got to see that, you know, in reality, the serpent uh, uh, of Egypt was a Naga. In, in expression and in, 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 in uh, frequency, it was a Naga. You see what I'm saying? When it was spoken, it was spoken Naga. 
not Naji. Okay, we got to quit because them Europeans that went over there. And, you know, that's some goddamn, uh, 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 you know, some European shit. That ain't got nothing to do with Africa. And so you see right there, that's a Naga Naji. That's the Egyptian cobra. But you also got the Naja or Naga uh, Negri colis. Okay, which is the which is the uh the black spinning cobra, which you can find in West Africa and you know even into Europe, I believe. You see what I'm saying? So you see right there in Africa, the term is Naga. You can say Naji if you want to. You understand? Or Naja if you want to. It's Naga. Okay? It's name no goddamn J's, and I'm gonna deal with that. But uh, the uh Basut, the Basilisk, okay? King of the serpent. So when you get to uh, you know, the Catholics who are in veneration of ISIS under the, the misnomer, the Black Madonna or Mary, you'll see that uh, Basilica, St. P- Peter's Basilica. See, ba- Basilis is the king of the serpents, but Basilica is the feminine expressing. It's the queen of the serpent. Who is that queen? It's ISIS. It's ISIS. And so if you don't understand that and you don't understand, you know, the expressions, you just you just reading to be reading. Is you reading to get a clear understanding or you just reading to be reading? So when you look at even in the hieroglyphs, you see that the, you got many expressions of ISIS. But in one expression, you see that at the bottom, you see the throne. You also see the queen cobra. And you know that it's a cobra because you see uh, the hood. You understand when the, when it spreads his hood out. You understand what I'm saying, and so that's a that's a cobra. So, so now, so when you hear negus, you can take the st off because the st means uh, uh king. You know, can, you know means king. So uh, kings, uh, negus negus, king of kings. But when you break it down, and you understand that negus is king, and naga is in his is serpentine expression. If you say negus. Naga, it means King Cobra, which is the exp- uh, the uh, zoo type, the divine zoo type of the pharaohs and many deities. Okay, which we're going to see. So you say niggas, and you see that eye in there. You understand what I'm saying? And that expression is also taken even when you say uh, 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 Nagini. You got the Naga, but you got the Nagini. You use the eye. So even even in that expression, the, the Ethiopian, the Kushites use the eye when they speaking in feminine, and so do the Kushites of 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 the Hindu Kush. You see what I'm saying? So when you say niggas niggas naga, that's queen clover. So here you see the Pharaoh, the deity, which is a deity, taking the the uh, the uh, expression of the naga. You see, so this was long before even India. You understand what I'm saying? This was before India. You understand what I'm saying? Who you think took it to India? You see what I'm saying? And so when you see the Nehemiah's crown, it's nothing but the hood of the cobra. It's nothing but the hood of the cobra representing the warrior king poised to strike. Again, showing you the Western Kush, Africa, the, the Naga, and then you see it in the Eastern Kush, Asia. Even the wing. So you got different forms of the Naga. You also got the, the Naga with the wings. And so you see that expression is also taken in India. And it was brought to the Americas where you get uh, Quetzalcoatl. You understand what I'm saying? Represented also with a human face, but also as the winged serpent. Uh, and so again, you see right here, Negus, a title of Ethiopian royalty, the African queen of a Negus. And so it must be stated that it, this is a divine queen. This is not no queen. This is not no king. This is a king and a queen ordained by God to rule. So when we talk about Diodorus Siculus, what does it say? Now, Diodorus Siculus was a Greek who, historian who flourished in the first century B- B.C. What does it say? It says, Osiris being come to the borders of Ethiopia, Raise high banks on either side of the river, least in the time of his inundation, it should overflow the country more than was convenient and make it marsh and boggy. And made floodgates to, to let in the water by degrees as far as, as was necessary. This he passed through Arabia, okay? Taking civilization, wasn't no Arabia at that time. Bordering upon, upon the Red Sea as far as to India. 
and the uttermost coast that were inhabited. He built likewise many cities in India, one of which he called uh, Nisa, willing to have a remembrance of that in Egypt where he was brought up. At this Nisa in India, he planted ivy, which grows and remains here only of all other places in India or the parts adjacent. He, le he left likewise many other marks of his being in those parts by which the later inhabitants, latter inhabitants, are induced to believe and do affirm that this God was born in India. Okay, so even in the first century, you understand what I'm saying? Even in the first century B.C., before the, uh, the, the Jesus myth, you see what I'm saying? The Serapis myth, you see what I'm saying? They were well aware that what you call India today was an extension of the mother Ethiopia in Africa. OK, so when you hear these terms, understand that these are African terms who you who you think gave them language. It was the Africans who you think gave them an alphabet. It was the Africans who created the first alphabet on the planet and all other scripts is only a derivative of the original script. Let's deal with that. So when you look at Osiris at the top and you look at uh, uh, Krishna at the bottom, you see that this is only an extension of the African story taken into those parts. Even when you look at the Mon, uh, which is a, uh, to the left, a Mon Khmer royal hairdress, you see the curls in the crown. Just like when you look at uh, the war crown of Egypt, you see that they got the, the circles in there to represent the coily, spirally hair, African hair. You get, so when you look over there today, you know, you're going to see some white, you know, Asian. You, that's not the Naga. OK, when you these is the Nagas, which you you don't want to recognize. These are the African woolly hair Buddhas. You understand when you look at you want to know who was there. Look at the deity. The deity is the supreme expression of the people. You understand what I'm saying? And right there ain't nothing over there that look like that. That's African. That's pure African. Unadulterated African. We got to understand that. Now, Champa, Ham, and so when I put that in there, Ham or Cham, this is coming out the biblical encyclopedia, Ham or Cham, as you can see, Cham is also a derivative of Ham. Burnt, swarthy, and black. And so you see our peoples came over on the monsoons. We went to India on the monsoon. And a lot of people going to see and understand that India broke away from Africa. It's actually African land that crashed into Asia. It was closer to Africa at a given time. You see what I'm saying? And you see, you know, in September to March, you got the dry monsoons that take, you know, that blow back. And then here's some wet ones down more into the uh, Bay of Bengal. You understand what I'm saying? That blow back towards Africa. You see? And so you see right here that India broke away from Africa. They got, you know, what they, they'll say 71, and they'll show you the variations of where they believe it to be down through the ages, but it broke away from Africa. Where, when did Madagascar, Ma, uh, when did Madagascar become an island? Madagascar and India broke off from Africa as a single continent, they say, 115 million years ago. India broke off from Madagascar 88 million years ago, India continued north on a collision course with Asia. So we got to understand that India broke away from uh, Asia. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at uh, uh, the, the Nagini, which is the female Naga, they are only forms of our set. So you could go into Africa and you see the worship and you can see the hood on the serpent. You see that the car, the black car is worshiping the uh the queen cobra as a deity you go into west africa you can go into uh, uh the caribbean and you see also our people there are worshiping the naga the serpent as a symbol of immortality creation e infinite consciousness you go into other areas all of them are worshiping this this powerful uh, representation of the deity as the king cobra as the queen cobra as the serpent you see what I'm saying? It's even coming into the, what we call India to start the, the Kushi Empire. Okay? Now, we're dealing, with, uh, we're dealing with representations of the Naga across three major oceans. Okay, so you see here from Africa to uh, India to even the Americas, what 
Pakal. You understand? Also represented as a Naga. Coming up out of, you know, you can see many uh, 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 serpents coming up out of the lotus in Egypt. And you see right here, he's coming up out of some, some plant. You understand? Like you see the lotus sometimes coming up out of the lotus. You see what I'm saying? So you see even there a, a, a representation, which cannot be a coincidence. You see what I'm saying? You got uh, Nagasaki, Japan. You also got Kush, uh, Kushiro, Japan. You got Kush, Japan. And there, and there's evidence that the Kushites were even in Japan, and they got document documents of it. The little Twa was in Japan, and they just like they got little mythologies of the leprechaun in in Ireland and in Britain. They got you know little mythologies of, of the little Twa in Japan, and we can we'll talk about that later. So even there, Nagasaki, you understand, showing you that this expression that this is Tashaka, king of the Naga. You see what I'm saying? The king of the Naga. And so you got these express, you got Shaka, and it's quite evident that, you know, that, you know, uh, the Zulus was off the, uh, the east coast of Africa, also on what we call the e the Kushite Indian Ocean. You see what I'm saying? Also called the Kushite Indian Ocean. So we got to, we got to understand that these are not just coincidences. You see what I'm saying? You got Queen Nandi, mother of Shaka, and you also got Nandi, the sacred bull of India. You got Nandi, the sacred bull of India. When you deal with the uh, when you deal with the uh, the seven Nagas of the that uh protect the Buddha, just like the Uraeus is protecting the Pharaoh. You got the seven Naga that protects uh the Buddha. And which is nothing uh, more than the uh, seven stars of Orion that's sacred to us all. These are the black Christ of the ancient world. Now, when they say Christ, they'll give you the Greek expression, the anointed or the anointed one. They just don't answer the question, anointed to with what? If he's anointed, what is he anointed with? See, and, and then you see God anointed my hair with oil. What kind of oil? He anointed your head with oil. What kind of oil? And see, when you go into the Naga Kush expression, Krishna means black. So the oil that was, uh, you know, our heads was anointed with was melanin. These was black woolly headed Christ all over the ancient world. Return of the dragon is the, is the same as return of the Christ. You understand? Because the dragon is, an, is a zoo type of the sun, the S-U-N. Christ is an, is an expression of the Son. Jesus Christ is only an expression of the S-U-N. The Jedi, the Jed as in the backbone of Osiris. This is the second coming of the solar age and the Christ consciousness that's coming upon the planet. And so you say, see the winged serpent of ancient Egypt, Kush, is the dragon. Do zoomorphic, mythical zoomorphic symbol of the sun. Lovers of libraries and books. Treasures adorned with crown symbolizing royalty. So when you see the Uraeus at the bottom, the winged serpent, this became the dragon in the Far East. And you see the sun is also there. That's the dragon egg. You understand what I'm saying? That's the dragon egg. And here to the, to the left, you see also the shin, which is a symbol of Im immortality. It's a symbol of immortality. And you see the dragon also there with the sun. So when they talk about the dragon egg, all they're talking about is the creation of the universe. They're talking about the dragon as the creative force, Isis as the creative force, bringing the new as the creative force. Bringing uh, existence, you know, bringing forth existence. So the dragon is symbolic of the sun. And so when they say the return of the dragon, they talking about the return of them Nagas, them Africans, the African conscious on the planet that put great Kushite civilizations all over the planet Earth. Also, the dragons are lovers of libraries and books. You know, goddamn well, ain't no dragon reading it. These are zoo types of African people. Ain't no damn, we are the ones that brought scrolls and books on the planet. You see what I'm saying? So this is symbi just like they say, uh, 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 St. Patrick cleared island of the snake. That's only symbolic uh, 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 of, of the African twa that was there that they call in mythology the leprechaun. And so you see that here to the right, you see uh, 
Isis and Osiris, uh, Set and Osa, and you see that the uh, serpent, the, the uh, king cobras and queen cobras wear crowns because they are symbolic of deity and royalty. So the dragon is also seen wearing crowns because it's only symbolic of the serpent, the Naga, that come up out of uh, Egypt. And so when you talk about the crucified you know, images, you see that the one that, you know, that just, which one don't fit? You see what I'm saying? You can see right there, all the other ones was Kushite black, but the one that don't fit is the one in the middle stolen. Then stolen our legacy, okay? Is ancient Nubia the home of the Naga culture? So when you see the wing serpent and you see the wing with the crown, you got to understand that that's only symbolic of us as a people, that we are the winged serpents. You understand? We are the Nagas. We are the Negus Nagas. We are the Negur. You understand what I'm saying? We are that. Not the, the, not the expression of the oppressor. We're not that. We're to, this existed, goddammit, tens of thousands of years before any Cro-Magnum Neanderthal even walked on the planet. So when you talk about uh, the winged serpent and you see dancing or on, on, in a bowl, and, and so when you see the uh, the Hindus blowing the flute and the serpent in the bowl dancing, and, you know, uh, moving back and forth to a melody, you got to understand that was done in Africa thousands of years before any Hindu even existed on the planet. To the left, you see Quetzalcoatl. This is not a coincidence. The Kushites took it all over the planet. These are deep, sacred, uh, spiritual teachings that could not be a coincidence in uh, on every continent. Not a coincidence. Okay, so when we get to uh, uh, when we get to you say you say Niger, ain't no damn Niger. You see, you say Nigeria and and, and Niger, and, and reality is nigger. Okay, so both I and J were used interchangeably by scribes to express. The sound of both the vowel and the consonant. Both I, so the J was an I. It wasn't until 1524 where Guyan, Gorgio, Tres, Tres, uh, Tresino, an Italian Renaissance gr grammarian known as the father of the letter J made a clear distinction between the two sounds. So it's, it wasn't until 1524 where you even had a goddamn J. You understand what I'm saying? The expression of J. So it wasn't no Niger. It wasn't no Nigeria. And when you see this expression in the world, in the ancient world, previous to 1524, it is what it is always going to be. Nigger. You see, and it means black in Latin. You see what I'm saying? You're going to see uh, a nigger, a negria, nigella. We're going to see all these expressions. And it don't mean nothing negative. It means black. You see, now uh, uh, the prophet called nigger. Okay. Now there was in the church that was Antioch certain prophets and teachers, teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called nigger. You see what I'm saying? That's what it is. This is Latin. You see what I'm saying? Ain't at that time ain't no J or nothing. It is what it is. It's nigger. Long before the Portuguese. Now, when you go into the Black Madonna, you see Negra, some said Formosa. Ne Negra, some said Formosa in, 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 in reference to the Black Madonna. You see what I'm saying? Now, what does that mean? Now, coming out of, you know, you know, looking on the Internet, it says that interpretation as well as later efforts to find correspondence between the life of Jesus and old scriptures allow a Latin translation of an earlier passage from Solomon. Negro, some said for Mosa, I am black but godly. Ain't no comely. I am black but godly. See, they didn't went in there and changed things. You understand? That, is, that was when black was divine. Spoken by a sun-darkened woman to be adopted into Roman Catholic services celebrating the Virgin Mary. So they can use the expression in divinity. They can use it in the expression to the Holy Mother, the most holy symbol in all the Catholicism. They can use it. They don't have no problem using it. Soon as you use it, you're also trapped in the oppressor, oppressor's uh, state of thinking. You can't even see that there's 
hundreds of, you know, expressions all around the Kushite world. None of them mean anything negative. All of them mean divine sovereignty, principality, deity. And the only thing you can see, you trap. You got niggeritis. The, the one, the expression that he spoke, the N-I-double-G-E-R. That's what you got. You see what I'm saying? Even the substantia uh, nigra, which is, you know, the back of the brain where you see that dark melanin. It's also a melanin center. You understand? That gives us the ability of movement. You understand? Eye coordination and, you know, being able to run and, you know, you know uh, movement. You understand what I'm saying? And it's a lot of things that are affected by this area. And when you don't have that melanin in the back of the brain in that area, this is where you get Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease and other diseases. You understand? It comes from that melanin. And so when you talk about black Madonna, it's, it's, it's Negrum Madonna. They have no problem. You And nowhere in, in all the world is it negative only in the uh, uh whatever it is the slave expression and the only expression you are, and so to stop us from playing that musical note that frequency you say is negative but everybody even other oppressors is using it in a in, in a definition of divinity other Africans from Ethiopia and all over the the ancient India are using it in a term of divinity and and, and righteousness and, and so on, and sovereignty and principality. And the only thing you can see is the oppressor, man. You, the first thing you got to do is unlock the prison that you didn't put that Cro Magnum Neanderthal in your brain because he's the one control. He's, a, he's the warden of the prison of your mind, and you cannot think outside of that. The black Madonna, Negro Madonna. Then you also got uh, nigger lapses which is a, a stone in, in Rome. You understand what I'm saying? And then you had a, 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 a Roman emperor, Pacinius nigger, not Niger. There's no Niger, there's no Jays in, in, in 193, 194 AD. is what it is. It's nigger. It means black in Latin. You see what I'm saying? And so today you got Nigeria, which was, you know, get the, that country was given the name Nigeria, the expression Nigeria from a white woman, Lady Shaw, if I'm not mistaken, and even Niger, ain't no Niger, and even the uh the the, the uh Black Sea, Nagellus, Nagellus, this the in the Black Sea is healing for according to the Quran, Prophet Muhammad said in the Black Sea is healing for every disease except death. So everything, so this is Nagellus. And so here, in, even in that expression, is something divine, is healing, is all powerful. We got to dig deep, family, be, and understand that this frequency is very, very powerful. It is a mantra, it is, it is a chant that our people seem to express all over the planet where the most ancient of Kushite people are. You understand? You got to come up out of your niggeritis. That's the one that the one the, uh, you know that has been uh, created for you by your oppressor, who put a uh, uh, you know uh, 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 a disdain on the word because they understood the greatness of who you are. Make I want to thank you for your time, energy, and support. Make sure you get over to kingsetty.com. Make sure you get make sure you get over to generalsetty.com. Make sure you subscribe to General Seti YouTube page, Sarasu and Seti YouTube page, because Seti Live is lit. Get over to my Patreon, General Sarasu and Seti, and get hooked up, get linked with them exclusive live streams that I got coming. Got some powerful on the way in the next day or so. This is the General Sarasu and Seti saying, peace.